we go. It is morning. It is good to see you today. We're starting a little late just because Wilma fell down. She's um, getting good care, and we're just going to keep her in our prayers and hope that she's home before we are. All right? Uh, other news? We have um, no. Pat Ionowski's memorial is a week from Saturday in the Family Life Center, and we have a birthday today. Is it Jean's birthday? All right. How, I want, how many candles on your cake? I don't know. Big deal. Oh. Okay, can we sing? <laughs> good. Um, Alan and Elizabeth Calvert are here this week and probably next week, but they're moving to Florida. So if you get a chance, say hi and thank you for all the help you've given us over the years. for our call to worship. No, wait a minute. Oh, the prelude. Water, all you who thirst. Come to the water, all you who are weary. We come to rest in the quiet pools of God's love. Come to the water, all you who long for justice. We come to be renewed from God's ever flowing stream. Let us worship God together. Join us in hymn number 421. The Church of Christ in Every Age.
As we come to meet the Lord, let us confess our shortcomings to the Holy One who covers us with grace. Holy God, we thank you for this season of Lent, during which you invite us to come, to examine, to confess, to be renewed and healed. We have begun this journey eagerly, anticipating that like Jesus in the wilderness, there are things which need to be lost so that better things can be found. Enable us to see past the immediate satisfaction of our wants, that we may choose instead the eternally fulfilling grace of your presence. Forgive us and cleanse us now in this moment of silence. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture assures us that no one who believes in God will be put to shame. God's love is sure, able to withstand any test when we walk near to the Lord. We need no longer live according to the temptations that play on our worst shames or fears. Thanks be to God. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please wave and to your neighbors. <laughs>
Testament reading this morning is from Psalm 92, and it can be found on page 548 of your pew Bible. <clears throat> it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For your enemies, O Lord, for your enemies shall perish. All evildoers shall be scattered. But you have exalted my horn like that of the wild ox. You have poured over me fresh oil. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the doom of my evil assailants. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. This is the word of the Lord. Switch. Yes, there we go. In all of the confusion, it's a rough start, but it's good to be here this morning with you. It is the first Sunday in Lent. Um, we are preparing ourselves for the journey to the cross and then to the empty tomb. And so I selected our from our lectionary, which we've been using the last couple weeks, about Jesus temptation from the Gospel of Luke. Um, it is called the temptation of Jesus, but uh, that can be taken several ways. It could be really meant as the first trial of Jesus. He's just been baptized in the Jordan and filled with the Holy Spirit. And so read with me, if you like, from Luke 4, beginning at the first verse. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. For 40 days he was tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they were ended, he was quite hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil ended every temptation, he departed from Jesus until an opportune time. This is the reading of God's word for us today. We are grateful for it. Let's pray. Lord God, pray that you would still our hearts and our minds, bring us to focus on you, that we might learn what it is you have for us today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I love going to the Old Globe Theater to watch Shakespeare, mostly because I never tire of what it means to be human and how it plays out in his writing. Every human life for Shakespeare is part of a larger theater with individual and collective moral responsibility. I love Hamlet's soliloquy, you know it, say it along with me, 
To be or not to be? That is the question. It goes on, of course, but the young prince is considering the purpose of his life and whether one should rise up against difficulties or give in and give up. And we also are watching. We see temptation and power, corruption and great sorrow resulting from humanity's choice to turn away from God. The Bible calls it sin. Now, before I go further into our scripture today, I want to point out that we are seeing this dilemma in front of us on our screens in real time as Russia has invaded Ukraine. For many of us, we are reminded of stories from our parents or even our grandparents who've escaped conflict that brought us here. For others, we are reminded of our time in uniform or stories of our spouse's time in uniform. And we all feel frustration and concern. We might feel helpless as well as great compassion when we consider the reports and their meaning. There is unspoken threat to our own comfort, if not our peace. And this is not God's way. Answers are not easy in an interconnected world. And we know that we all share in the cost and the responsibility for freedom. But I will say now that your presence in worship today matters. Your prayers matter. Your vote matters. And all the while, God is not silent. God is not absent either. He remains sovereign, and we will trust in the Lord. We try to keep the promises of God nearby for our own hour of need, even as we intercess for others in theirs. So with that in mind today, the passage in Luke talks about a common theme for all humanity. What do we do when we're tempted? Or, as some people say, tested. For the word is the same word in the original language, a test, and a temptation are the same thing. One might even say it's a trial, and it is the root word for the word peril, to be in danger. Now, if you think back to school, there are standardized tests which go for our children, and they measure our learning. We may not like them, but they're there. But in life, there are other tests as well. There are driver's tests, lab tests, doctor's tests, professional license tests, and more. They may feel perilous, but we would not call them a temptation. That is, unless you're planning on cheating. But in fact, tests are an important part of life. They prove our mettle. Are we reaching or exceeding the bar? This is true in the story of Jesus. He is starting his ministry. He is the Son of God. But is he fully human, and can he be that one human who meets the bar for God's plan? Now, some of my Navy friends know that before you commission a ship or a sub, you run a series of tests to check its seaworthiness. We call it sea trials. Can it perform the task it was designed to do? This is what Jesus was up for in a different way. But there are also test pilots, maybe some of you know. There is the famous story of the right stuff that tells what it is to be a test pilot and check out the actual functioning of a new aeronautical design. When Boeing first built its first jet-propelled airplane, the 707, they had to be concerned about the stress on the wings with the weight of the engine. And so the test pilots took it up and had to try to shake off the engine and keep the wing solid. It turned out it was airworthy, reliable. It had passed the test. So much so that on August 7th, 1955, a test pilot named Tex Johnston was to present this to some executives of airline companies like Pan Am and Eastern. And he was to show off the prototype in a flight over Lake Washington. Boeing CEO Bill Allen had a party out on his boat. But Tex Johnstone 
didn't just fly over. At a speed of 490 miles an hour, she executed a full barrel roll. That was not in the program. He flew a 248,000 pound aircraft upside down. And you can see it in the photo that was taken from the plane with the engines up. Thankfully, they did not fall off, nor did the wings crack. But Mr. Allen was not pleased. He called Tex Johnston into his office the next day and said, don't do that again. You know it can do it. I know it can do it. But we don't need to show everyone else it can do it. But in fact, that event sold more 707s than any other sales maneuver before. It went on to become the workhorse of the new skies. And it was even the first jet Air Force One. Now, while Tex Johnston may have acted on his own temptation, it was the airplane that was completely reliable. And Luke 4 tells us not so much about the person as the plan that God had and his trust in Jesus, his son, completely reliable. Jesus has started his ministry, he's been baptized at the Jordan, and he goes out into the desert filled with the Holy Spirit for 40 days alone time. He must have been very hungry, but he was constantly beset by the devil in temptation during that whole time. And at the end of those 40 days, no manna like the people of Israel, he was on his own, the devil gave him three last tries. There were three different ways that he tried to dethrone God with the word if, or some would say since. He was trying to get Jesus to prove himself. He who did not need to prove anything. He who was God and also fully human. In the confidence of the Holy Spirit, took on those tests and passed with flying colors. God is wholly true and committed to his purposes. And there is no if in the promise of God. The Lord's response to the devil's challenge first was physical comfort. Turn this stone into bread. And Jesus wanted to respond with God's word himself. He said, paraphrased, life is more than feelings. God is the God of life and he supplies all our need. This was a great response from the Bible to the devil. Second, he said in response to the devil, devil wanted him to have power, pretended to offer Jesus the power that he had in a temporal life over the world, but that power which was created by God and could only be given or taken by God and Jesus' response is, worship and serve only God. In all things, praise the Lord of life. In other words, Jesus doesn't need what the devil can offer. He made it already. He owns it already. And the devil would twist the truth to try and trick the Lord. In the last response, the devil takes him to the top of the temple. 450 feet above the river Kidron, where Jesus would later be in the Valley of Gethsemane. And he takes him up to the pinnacle there, and he says, if you're really God, be spectacular. Throw yourself down in front of all those people and see if God's promise to bear you up, that you start a, lest you strike your foot against a stone. See if it's true. And this is the devil's greatest error. He asks Jesus to deny his own identity his integrity as God, knowing the plan. Spectacular isn't in the plan. Humility is in the plan. And though that would be quite a sight, even a superhero sight, and people may follow for a while, it would not save humanity. The only way to save humanity would be to give it all up. And the trial of Jesus is that though he was fully God, 
he gave it all up and became human. And though he was fully human, he gave up all his privilege, all of his rights, and lived as a common and ordinary person. And he sacrificed himself so that we would live. So there are some lessons in these verses for us. First of all, follow God's plan. God is good, and even in those dark times when we're alone, we have material hunger, or we have social needs for approval, or even for celebration. Trust God's timing and plan. God is not tested, but he proves himself when we follow him. Second, know that the devil is real. We in our society don't like to talk about it, and certainly I wouldn't say focus on that. But the devil is all that is in opposition to God. Some would say a personality, a principality is Paul's word, but there is a spiritual power that, live, that is in opposition to all that is good and kind and loving. And you know it because it is deceiving and destructive, and it denies God. Third, know that Jesus' answer from Scripture is a good model for us. Of course, he knew it inside out, and we may only have a few favorite verses, but God's word is reliable and true. And sometimes it's good to have one tucked away in our pocketbook or in our memory to lean on in times of our own trial or temptation. I know that in times of my life when I was suffering the most, a friend of mine tape recorded, back in the days of tape recording, a couple of my favorite verses so that I could play them when I was alone in the hospital. It made a great difference to hear a familiar voice calmly reminding me of God's promises. Some of you will send cards and messages. We have our prayer chain and our prayer quilts. They're all different ways of saying, you belong to God. You are God's child. You are part of this body of the Christ. And the promises are true and reliable. Hold on to them. Worship and serve only God. Trust in his plan. Life is more than feelings. God is the God of life. And so my challenge to you then, as you look at this passage, there's much in it to study. But take away what fits, what works for you. You may be tested in some physical way, with illness or with pain. There are people on our prayer chain even now that we support. There are people in other parts of the world who are tested with hunger and suffering, and we pray for them each Sunday because as God's people, we are one. But there are also tests for attention, for our worship, our pleasure. And there are tests which cause us to doubt God's goodness. And this is the greatest lesson of this passage, for the devil started each temptation with the word if. Where do we see that before? In the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, there were instructions for the first human beings, Adam and Eve. And it was the snake, the devil, who said, if God really said that, did God really mean it? And introduced that level of doubt, causing some darkness in the hearts of God's perfect human creation. Jesus' temptation is God's response to that error. He is his response to the fall, because as a fully human person, he met the temptation, he answered the if, not with a proof as much as himself. Jesus knew his identity in God. He knew he was fully human, and he knew that God was working a plan. And so his response to the devil was to be himself. My encouragement to you, be yourself in Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Make a habit of putting your hand in God's hand every day. Trust God's plan. 
And when life takes you for a loop, and when friends or humans or even ourselves, when we fail, know that Jesus did not. He passed the test 100%. In 35 days' time, we will see the Lord in another perilous test. In the dark garden, he prays. It is a great trial and temptation. Yet he willingly takes it on, and he goes to the cross, experiencing the worst that humanity can give him. Tempted by the devil, he proves he is God, but he dies first as a human being. Human power cannot overcome him. Spectacular is not in the plan, and even comfort is sacrificed. As the ruler of all creation, Jesus offered everything, everything he had in exchange for what? In exchange for our lives, for you and me, that the price of our test of falling short would not bear, be borne by us but by him. For only the one who was fully human and not failing could give us his passing grave. Jesus was found true. Death could not undo him. And Jesus, the Son of God, was fully human, fully divine, responding one last <clears throat> and final time to the devil. I am who I am. I will be who I will be for my people and their salvation. And so the question of Hamlet, the question of all humanity, is answered by God, who redeemed us to be his image. We are so grateful. We owe him our devotion, and he stands with us in whatever we face. The story is told of a little girl she was asked by her grandmother if Satan ever tempted her to do wrong. Oh yes, she replied, but when he knocks at the door of my heart, I just pray, Lord Jesus, answer that door. What happens then, said the granny. Oh, everything turns out all right. You see, when Satan sees the devil, he runs away. What a great picture for all of us. Jesus is in our heart. We have invited him in, and he can answer that door so that we can be the children of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able. And join me in the affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. You may be seated. We're not doing the doxology right now. We're having the offertory by the choir. <clears throat>
and explained to them the difficulties ahead. But he also gave us this meal as a comfort and a promise that all will be overcome. Lord, friends, this is the Lord's table. It belongs to all the saints across this world of all times and all places. And he asks all of us who put our trust in him to come to this table and share in his heavenly feast. So I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, we lift up our hearts to you in thanks and praise. We are so grateful that you have called us to be your children, that you have given us your own identity and the power of the Spirit to live our lives daily in your presence. Remind us to worship you and you alone to lean on the plan that you have given and the purpose you have for our own lives. And Lord God, we ask that you walk with us even as we remember brothers and sisters around the world. We pray for those in our church, in our community who are struggling with increased costs or keeping a roof over their head. We pray for all those who suffer with hunger and illness and deprivation and we remember saints here even who have fallen we pray for Nan Rathbun and Wilma Pichon we ask that you would heal them quickly and return them to our fellowship as we pray for so many others Lord God we pray for those who are beset by tests of addiction or um, other things that would cause them to turn their eyes from you. Help us to be eyes and arms to lift them up, to hold them strong, as we all recognize that we couldn't be who we are without you. And so we pray for saints across the world, in China, in Ukraine, in the Middle East, and even in Korea, Korea yes, where your word goes out in suffering and times of difficulty. May the church show compassion and be a rescue as political leaders make difficult decisions. <clears throat> Lord God, remind us that you are the power above all politics, that you are the God who loves over all reputation, and you work for good, not destruction. Help us to trust in that in our own lives and around the world and use us to make peace to your glory. We have so many unspoken thoughts and worries on our hearts, but we lift them to you. We ask that you remind us to lean into you, even as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And after taking bread and giving thanks to God for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples as I ministering in his name do for you. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. As long as you drink this cup and eat this bread, you and I proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he returns. And now we were still on our program with the personal communion wafer. We're invited, we will take it together, peel the cellophane off to get to the wafer. And then you may dip it in the, in the juice. This is the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Take, eat and drink all of it. And just as the early disciples did after supper, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your presence among us, even now. The blessing, the reminder that you are working for good in all things. Be with us now, go with us, that we might always be with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you now to stand and we will sing number 408. Where cross the crowded ways of life.
with his life. He has a plan and a purpose for you and goes with you today and every day. So go in that love, power, and peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.